In this video today, I'm going to be walking you through my Serato DJ Pro settings. I'm using Serato 3.05 with stems, and I'm running this on a MacBook Pro with the following specs that I'm going to show you on the screen right now. So if we come over to Serato, I'm going to come up to the top here and go to settings. We've got multiple pages to go through, so I'm going to go through each one one by one. I'm going to kind of talk through each of the settings, why I haven't checked or why I don't have them checked, and kind of explain what each one kind of does. So the first page we've got is DJ preferences. So we're going to start at the top with control preferences. I don't use playback keys, use shift. Play Playback keys you shift is basically, say for example, you're one of those DJs that manages to type on a keyboard and then your Serato starts to play in reverse. If you have this setting checked, you'll have to press shift in order to press anything on the keyboard. So say for example, to play a track on deck one, you need to press W, but if you have this setting checked, you have to press shift and W. It kind of just prevents you from accidentally pressing anything on your keyboard whilst you're DJing. So I don't have that checked. I also don't have lock playing deck. Lock playing deck kind of slows me down. Basically what this is, is if you have lock playing deck on and you try to load a track on say deck two whilst, whilst there's a track playing on it, it will stop you. But for me, I feel like that slows me down because basically I'm have to stop the track, load the track, I haven't got time for that. If anyone's ever seen me DJ before, you know that I DJ very fast, so lock in playing deck really does slow me down so I don't have it checked. So this next set and night I have here, I've only recently put this on this year, so sort cues and loops chronologically. So basically when you set a cue point, say at the start of the track, middle of the track, or the end of the track, the cue points are gonna show in chronological order based on the time. And it's the same with loops as well. I've only recently turned this on, but it's a great feature. Enable hot cues, this pretty much just allows you to enable the hot cues in Serato DJ Pro. Track in warning, basically if you're using something like a CDJ or you've got a controller with LEDs around the jog wheels, when the track gets to the last, I think it's 60 seconds, the lights around the jog wheel will start to flash up just to let you know that the track is gonna be ending soon. The next setting is disable needle search during playback. So on CDJs, they do have the needle search. Sometimes I might be moving over the, um, the screen and I might accidentally touch that. If you don't have this switched on and you click the needle search, it might jump to a completely different part of the track. So basically I just have this disabled just to prevent me from messing up whilst I'm DJing. And then the next one on here show beat jump controls. Beat jump controls is one of the best features in Serato DJ Pro. And it's one of the most underrated one as well. So basically if you have this enabled, it'll bring up a new section on your DJ screen. I'm gonna show it on the screen right now. And then what you can do is you can jump forward, backwards, say 16 beats, four beats, 32 beats. And it's a really good feature to have. I use this in every single one of my DJ sets. If you want me to do a video on beat jump, let me know in the comments down below. So under that, we've got quantize value. Quantize value, I just have set as half a beat. We also have use auto gains. So auto gain, basically when Serato analyzes your tracks, it tries to match the volumes the same. Basically, you're gonna have some tracks in your music library that are quieter than others, louder than others. And if you don't have auto gain, you'd have to use a trim knob on your controller or your mix are to kind of match the volumes. This just allows you to not have to do it as much. So if you're a Serato user and you happen to start using USBs with record box, on the USBs you don't have auto gain, you're gonna see the difference in how helpful Serato really is. But yeah, so I use auto gain, it's just got a 92 dB. There are other settings in here, but I've just left this as the recommended, as Serato says, that's the recommended one. Underneath here, break and stop time, I don't have any of these switched on. Underneath here, we got on song load. So I don't play a track from start, I have instant double switched on, because if you've seen me DJ before, I always play the track on the right hand side, instant double it over to the left hand side and then get the track ready on the right hand side. That's purely because I like to scratch in with my right hand. So I always just have the left track playing, then I'm always gonna bring in the song on the right hand side. Also instant doubles is a great feature just in case one of the decks happens to break. I do usually go to some sets with just my S9 mix and one CDJ. With instant doubles switched on, it allows me to DJ with just one deck. If you want me to do a video on how to DJ with one deck and one mixer, let me know in the comments down below. If you feel like you're getting any value out of this video, make sure you're hitting that like button on the video. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this. So underneath instant doubles, you've got play from first cue point. Now, when I do a bunch of routines, I do have to have the tracks playing from first cue point. But basically when you load a track, it will just load the track on the first cue point. Um, there's nothing really more to say about it. Again, if you want me to do a video on all these settings, let me know in the comments down below. So the next setting here is analyze stems. So basically since Serato 3.0, Serato allows you to isolate the acapella of a track, the instrumental of a track, and turning this on analyzes the stems in real time. Once the track is loaded, I'm able to immediately take out the acapella or leave the acapella and take out the instrumental. This setting does use up a lot of CPU and memory. If your computer can't handle this or your computer doesn't have enough memory or CPU, maybe don't check this setting. Virtual deck speed, I just have it as 33 revs per minute. I think that's the default setting. I haven't changed that. Record 
recording underneath. I've just got 16 bit and the file format as eighth. Again, these are just default settings that Serato have in there. So under sync mode, I just have simple sync turned on. And then the sync preferences, I just have snap to beat grid and maintain sync on track load. If you want me to do a video on sync and if sync is beneficial to DJs or if you feel like DJs shouldn't be using sync, let me know in the comments down below. That's the uh, first page done, DJ preferences. So we're gonna now head over to audio. So under audio, there's not that many settings underneath here. So I have the USB buffer size of two. Basically, this is the time it takes for the software to register like a button press on my S9 or the CDJs when you touch the platter. So depending on how powerful your computer is, you can bring this down lower. So my computer is quite powerful. So I brought it down to two. One is a bit too much my laptop so I don't need to go to one because I don't want it to stress too much. Two is just perfect. Five is the default and most of you when you set up your Serato on your laptop you're probably going to start with five. Over time maybe gradually bring it down and see how things go but don't bring it down too much. It could put a lot of stress on your computer and it can also cause audio dropout. So when you're sorting out this setting please be careful. So that's all the settings on audio. Um, CD vinyl. I don't have any of these turned on so there's just there's a bunch of vinyl control needle dropping. I don't use any of these. So under library, the first setting we've got is show iTunes library. I no longer use iTunes for my music management. I came out of that about a year ago. If you want to know how I came out of iTunes, check the links in the description down below. There's a three part series of how I moved my music library out of iTunes into music folders. And all I do now is manage my music inside Serato. I don't have protect library turned on. So basically protect library is say, for example, you have this turned on and you try and delete a crate or change anything with a crate. It will just say library is protected. You need to turn this off. That's just basically if you don't want to get any crates deleted it's just a bit of protection for you custom crate columns basically if you check this if you have like i don't know an r&b crate and a hip-hop crate in the r&b crate you can have custom columns so you can have inside the r&b one title genre bpm and key but then if you have hip hop in there, you can have just title, BPM and comment. You can have different ones, but I feel that's a bit too confusing for me. So I've turned that off. So basically every single crate I have in Serato DJ Pro have the exact same columns. I don't have center on selected track. Basically when you're scrolling through your tracks, the center track is always selected. I feel like I don't need that. Include sub crate tracks. So basically, so say for example, you're in your music organization, you've got R&B. Then inside you've got old school R&B, mid school R&B, new school R&B. When you click the outer folder which is called R&B if you don't have this selected you won't see the tracks inside the sub crates so basically I have this switched on so basically if I want to play R&B and it has all the sub crates old school mid school and new school I'll see all those tracks if I don't have it switched on I won't see all them tracks inside there so yeah this might be a good setting for you if you use sub crates also underneath library we've got uh, play track color so basically when you play a track the track's gonna turn um, blue. The only options are blue, gray, or none. Another setting here is reset played tracks on exit. So basically when you close Serato and then you open it back up again, all the blue tracks are gonna go. I know a lot of DJs that don't have this setting switched on and they just open up Serato and have the blue tracks. You know what? I don't know how you do it. I have really bad memory as it is. So if I don't reset the, the played tracks, I'm not gonna know what tracks I've already played. And so yeah, so basically I just have this setting checked. So anytime Serato closes, it resets again and all my tracks are white. Then when I play them again, they turn blue. I've turned off enable play count. Basically in a previous Serato when this came out, every time I loaded a track, it was writing a tag to, the, um, to my library and it was just taking that little bit longer and it was just processing a bit too much in the background. So I just turned this off. I don't need to know how many times I've played a track I honestly don't actually care. So that's why I don't have this switched on. Library text size, I change this all the time. If I'm doing a lot of music organization, I normally turn it down all the way. But then when I'm DJing, um, I might turn it up a little bit so I can see. And you know, obviously when you're tired, your eyes get a bit strained. So you don't want to have too much small writing in front of you. So you might want to turn it up as well. So under display, uh, show matching tempo, matching display, I don't have switched on. Hide track artist AM mode. So basically, I don't know, if you don't want anyone to know what song you're playing, you can switch this off. EQ kind of waveform. So basically, when you're playing around with the high lows and mediums on your mixer, the waveforms will change color. This is just a cool feature. It's, it's, just, it's more of a visual thing. Um, I really like it, so I have it switched on. Color key display, I have switched on. Performance pad cue layout, I have 
switched on. Deck BPM display, I just have set to one decimal place. Maximum screen updates per second, I have all the way to 60. The lower you have it, the less updates it have on the screen, so you're gonna see more lag. Basically, the higher the better. Also, this is all down to CPU and memory on your computer. So obviously, if you don't have a high CPU or memory computer, make sure you turn this down. High res display, basically, if you don't have this turned on, Serato is gonna look a bit, what's the word? Serato is gonna look a bit rigid. <laughs> it's not gonna be all nice and sharp and stuff like that. I like to have high res screen display turned on. Again, it uses up a little bit more CPU, but I think it's worth it. Show key as Camelot, I have that on there. Send data uses to Serato, I have this switched on. I think this is default. I could turn this off to prevent extra things happening on my computer. I also don't have streaming services turned on purely because I used BeatSource about a couple of months ago and it crashed my computer. So I've just turned off streaming services. I don't use streaming services at all. I just use the MP3s on my computer. Under mixer, I just have EQ Boost 6 dB. Um, the up fader curve is just set to nothing. And then cross fader, I have set as fast because I do a lot of scratching. Under effects, I don't really use the effects in Serato. I use my hardware effects on my S9. So this isn't really being used. And then Expansion packs, these are all the expansion packs that I have in my Serato. So I have Serato Video, Soundplus, Serato Playlist, Serato Remote, Vinyl CDJ Control, Pitch and Time DJ, Serato Flip, and Serato Play. So that was me going through all the top settings that I use in Serato DJ Pro. Now that you've watched this video, check this video out here.